Welcome back to The Boy From Yesterday. Before we get to chapter 19, just a reminder to please leave a rating and a review wherever you find podcasts so that we can spread the word and share the story with people all over the world. Chapter 19, Main Street. Laurel and Tom made a quick trip of racing down the stairs out the front door this time, Tom looking back to see how the house looked now that he could visualize more and more of it in context to how it used to look approaching from the street. He's still getting get used to walking on the black rock that coated the streets now, but Laurel explained that and many other things as they walked along toward the center of town. Tom pointed out to Laurel various landmarks he recognized, as Laurel explained that Chesterfield State Teachers College had become Chesterfield University in the 1930s and was now a popular university that was co-ed, which she explained to Tom meant men and women studying together, a word which even Laurel didn't know until Marguerite explained it to her. Tom shrugged at this and didn't quite see the point of it, but he was starting to accept whatever Laurel taught him as it was, without always an explanation, although he had plenty of questions. Tom didn't really look where he was going, because he was so fascinated with the changes he saw. The horseless carriages running down the street and those already pitched to, he thought, parking meters captured his attention the most, seeing their various designs and colors. They made the rounds around town in Tom's transformation. Woodward's department store was the primary store on Main Street, which Tom explained had been an ironworks in his time. Laurel helped him pick out some current clothes, many of which Tom was appalled at in their garish colors and odd designs. She blessed as she explained dressing rooms, and Tom went hesitatingly in, coming out looking fantastic in the new clothes Laurel had, as Laurel grinned. They went to Curly's hair salon, which fascinated Tom because both men and women were in the same place, getting their hair cut and styled. Laurel explained to her stylist, Jenna, that Tom was a friend from Canada who didn't talk much as she winked at Tom, and Jenna went to work. She gave Tom's loose, wavy locks a little trim as Tom looked at himself in the mirror, embarrassed to be wearing the big black smock with the pink stripes running through it. He was so startled by the gun-shaped blow dryer that Jenna gave Laurel a look like, what, he's never seen a blow dryer in Canada? Laurel just smiled and shrugged, while Tom was a good sport and just went with it though he was glad when the blown hot air and shrill noise were over. Jenna did a great job, and the already handsome Tom looked kick-ass in a new, somewhat asymmetrical cut that looked not only modern, but downright trendy and hip. Laurel decided to try to complete the illusion. She took Tom to the rather punk used clothing store, while Tom just stared at a tall, thin goth guy with tall, black, spiky mohawk with red tips and some punk makeup, which was really odd for Chesterfield who helped Tom try on a couple of necklaces and a leather wrist cuff that looked great with his new haircut. Next was the nail salon, where Tom's rough hands and fingernails and toenails were patiently transformed by Annie, a Vietnamese girl in Laurel's comparative literature class on campus. Tom was ticklish in his feet, but he agreed that his hands and feet looked much better afterward. As Tom and Laurel were walking by the nail salon to the shoe store, Tom saw his first motorcycle go by, a black and chrome triumph with a young guy in a tight black leather jacket and full face colorful helmet ride by, which made Tom smile and pointed out to Laurel, who just shook her head in silent resignation, that although Tom was from over 100 years ago, Guy's fascination with motorcycles seemed to be an innate trait that was, and probably will forever remain, timeless. Tom tried on various shoes at the Payright shoe store, fascinated that they came in such precise sizes and eventually found some boots that made him taller, more confident, and more stylish than before. They walked out the shoe store, and a small group of two girls and one guy passed them by them. Tom looked back to find all of them, the two girls and the guy, were looking back at him, not at Laurel, at him, and smiling a universal smile of flirtation, which made Tom blush, especially the guy part. Tom knew that the place he had come from was different from the one he left, even if he was walking near the same Main Street intersection that he had walked what to him was just a few days before. Tom had barely recovered from the momentary blush when he turned to see Laurel turn pale instantly. In front of them, walking together, were Emily and TJ. Laurel somehow didn't think of what to say to them, but she knew she had better think of something, and fast. Just play along, 
Laurel whispered in Tom's ear. I know these guys. Lars, what's up? I've been texting you. Your reception bad again? They're building a new cell tower on the library tower. That should help, Emily said as she came up and hugged Laurel, while TJ just stood behind and looked silently at Tom, wondering who this great-looking guy was. We haven't been introduced, TJ said grandly, extending his hand to Tom with a big smile. Tom just stood, not knowing what to say, and was shocked that a Negro, as he knew them, didn't he didn't know was greeting him on the street, walking with a white girl down the sidewalk. Tom had to keep silently reminding himself that the rules of his time were frequently and constantly in a state of upheaval. This occurred to Laurel as she saw T.J. extend his hand and everything that she had been studying lately in American history about the history of the Civil Rights Movement came into instant perspective. Oh, guys, uh, Tom, um, these are my friends, Emily Lemon and T.J. Jennings. We all go to Chesterfield together. We're freshmen. Guys, this is Tom Flannery. He's from um, really far. He's from uh, well, Canada. Yeah, he's he's a new exchange student um, starting mid-semester. There's lots of paperwork and all, but it all worked out. It's a new program. They're they're trying it out. Tom's the guinea pig. I mean, the first of of many students. I mean, not guinea pigs. Well, not literally. You know, students. We're Gran and I. We're hosting him. He'll be staying with us. We wanted to support the new program for exchange students from Canada. T.J. gave Laurel a look, and Emily looked at T.J. After a pause, T.J. deadpanned, I love Canada. Emily said, You've never even been to Canada. T.J. glanced back at Emily, then back up at Tom. Call it a hunch. Emily ignored him. Lars, it looks like we have uh, catching up to do, at least. We were just going to rock it. Um, you both hungry? Tom finally spoke up, yes, as he was very hungry by now, after a morning of shopping and taking in the sights as if he were some kind of intercentury tourist. Yeah, agreed Laura with a half-hearted enthusiasm. Going to Rocket Donner with Tom and her friends without being able to explain anything in private to Tom was going to be tough. Emily pulled Laurel aside and started talking about a class assignment while Tom walked behind with TJ while TJ asked Tom how he liked Chesterfield so far. Land sakes, it's Rip Snorton, Tom said, not realizing how that sounded. T.J. just smiled wanly and figured that's the way they talk in Canada. Nobody ever knows how Canadians talk, T.J. thought.